do, 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 do. Okay, cool. So I figure we could be going into like SHSAT material. I know a couple of you have mentioned that like you're doing ninth grade uh, studying and that's awesome. Uh, we can also go a little bit into the SAT because you guys are going to be gearing up in three years to take that SAT. And if you start now, then you have a high probability to be doing really well when you get to the test. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys want to talk about? Is there any like questions or math questions that you guys are, I don't know, that you guys are still thinking about? Let me see if I can just throw some math problems here. What's a really good one? Oh, actually, let me pull these up. These are really good ones. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So this is, oh, I don't want to show you guys the answers. Okay, tell us, could you keep us updated? Seventh grade now, started prepping. Oh, nice, dude. Nice, Zach. Yeah, so they haven't released the new student handbook yet, but I'm, as soon as that comes out, I'm going to be breaking it down for you guys. Um, if you're working on anything in particular, we can talk about it. Um, I, I don't know what they're going to do. They might make the test easier this year. They might not. So here's a really good question. Uh, I'll block out these other ones so you don't get distracted. Um, there's, come on. Oh my gosh. All right, hold on. That's what I'll do. And do that and do that. Okay. So this is one that I was working on earlier with a student of mine, and it was super, super hard. Oh, good. You guys can see it. Oh, what's up, Yashin? Uh, welcome back, Luxano. Elizabeth, good to see you. Cool. Yeah, awesome. So there's like a, <laughs> there's like a 10 second delay on the stream. Um, but here's an example of a SHSAT style question that is definitely game for ninth grade, definitely, definitely game for eighth grade. Um, and I think it actually is a, a pretty good, pretty good question as far as like algebra and stuff. So uh, why don't you guys give this a shot? Also, for those of you who are in specialized high schools, how are you guys liking it? Do you guys have any um, advice or anything that you would say to people who are studying for the SHSAT this year? Or if you just want to shout, shout out yourself, you can shout out yourself. <laughs> this question is hard, though, because it's there's this um, – I've read this internet question. Let me – Ah, uh, whatever. We'll talk about that after this. Yeah, and Vixeno, I kind of agree that the SHSAT is a bit unfair. Uh, they they want it so that the average grade for the test is a 50%. And that's so, like, they, so they have to do a lot of things to to get the average kid to score an F. So that's kind of what we're dealing with, you know. Okay, so let's talk about this one and let's talk about how the information that we're not given is actually just as important, if not more important, than the information we are given. So the way that I set up problems like this is I like try to visualize it spatially. All right, so check it out. If there's 20 desks, we know that that's what they're made of, right? And so we know that there's five green ones 
and the rest are not green because it says there are 20 desks in a workshop, five are green. And we need to know eventually how many are not green and not ready. So it's either green or it's not. So for this, I'm just gonna say that it's blue just to give myself something else to work with. Not saying that they are blue, just as long as they're not green. Um, and then we know uh, seven desks are ready to ship. And that means that, let's see, uh, how am I gonna visualize this? That means that 13 are not ready to ship. So let's kind of talk, let's just do this and this. And so we know that seven are ready. And that means that 13 are not ready. Okay. Cool. And this would be the seven and this would be the 13. Yeah. So now we need to figure out how to incorporate this three desks or green desks ready to ship. Right. So we know that there's five green desks total. And we know that three of the three of these are green desks ready to go. If there are seven desks total that are ready to go, and only three of them are green, that means four of them are blue. Because eventually there needs to be seven desks that are ready and only three of them are green, right? What do you guys think about the rest of this problem, finishing it out? What is your what is your opinion or what is your instinct telling you mathematically how to finish this problem? Oh my god, the <laughs> the delay is so severe. It's like a 20 second delay. So I'm just watching. Okay. Finally my hands went away. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. The delay is so like I can watch it delay in real time. So what do you guys think about an answer for this? Yeah. Oh my God. Ratios. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of put a ratio in this where you can say that there's 15 green to 15 B not green. Generally, ratio problems are going to be like comparing one thing directly to another. So like you might see like if the, let me do an extra problem for you. If the ratio of, let's say, I don't know, um, salad to burgers is one to three and there are let's say 300 burgers how many salad so this would be an example of like a ratio problem i'm going to separate these two so just uh, for you elizabeth just thinking about when do we use the tool of ratios normally it's when you're comparing one thing to another thing and this would make you seem like it, but notice that we're not given a ratio. And yes, you could use ratios to correctly solve this because math is math. It would just take you on a lot longer of a route to get there. So looking at this question, and keep in mind, this is a high difficulty question. There are three desks that are green desks ready to ship. Three desks that are green and ready to ship. How many desks do we have that are green overall? Five. So that means two of these green desks are not ready to ship because two plus three is five. So in the, let me make this thicker, extra thicker. So in the not ready to ship, we know we have two green ones. And that makes sense. Here we go, that's our five. So we know that this non-green and this not ready to ship non-green needs to add up to 15. So since there's four here, that means there's 11 here. That's our answer, 11. So I'm sure you might have a question about that, which is totally chill. 
Um, if you have a question about that, holler. If you have a question about this ratio question that I kind of whipped up, um, let me know as well because these can be tricky. Or if there's any other math concept that's like in your mind that you're like, uh, how do I do this? Or, oh, I saw this in class and I don't know. Or like whatever is just like boggling your mind or, you know, even if it's ELA, I guess we could scoot over to ELA too. I'm just like testing my live streaming software because YouTube always messing up, man. Um, I guess I don't have enough subscribers to mobile <laughs> live stream anymore. So I have to get an embedder or whatever this is. Okay. So I'm interested in um, knowing where the test is going to go this year. Either this week or next week, they're going to release the, the, I don't know, the information about the test. So I'll definitely be coming with some new content when that happens. Um, just to kind of, I don't know, keep things updated. Because I have a feeling that they're going to make the test a little bit easier. They might make it a little bit harder. Uh, they might change some of the concepts that are tested, but, you know, I mean, we don't really know until they release the handbook, and that should be coming up really, really soon. Um, you guys are in summer, aren't you, right now? That's kind of so crazy they release it during the summer. Um, so let me throw up my link, because I've been spending, like, hundreds of hours making these, like, math games for you guys, and I want to show you... Or at least write down the link so you guys could see it and try these. So the first game that I made is called Geometry Swamp. And I'm probably going to remake it, honestly. I wasn't super happy with it. Um, and the second game is called Deep Mine. And you can see both of these, or you can play both of them on my website. And I think it's slash game. I don't think there's an S there after game. I think it's just game. So yeah, definitely check that out. Like, I don't know, check out that website. Like I, I spent a lot of time um, making those games. Specifically Deep Mine. I'm very interested to see which one of you guys can get to the bottom of it. So I can't tell you how deep Deep Mine is. But I will say it's pretty deep, and I will say that there's a couple dungeons that you have to work your way through. Um, but yeah, it's it's a game that is, yeah, there's algebra in it, and some of the algebra can be challenging to some people. I'm talking about DeepMind here. However, like the al once you kind of get like how algebra goes down, like it's not it's not super super hard, but it's long. And you can't make a mistake and it tests your precision like I have a ton of like really like re most of my students are very bright and like very like you know like you know they know all of the advanced concepts but when it gets down to being precise over like 50 questions or whatever that's when they have a problem and so I encourage you to go to this deep mind and play it and just tell me how deep you go and if you get to the very bottom of deep mind like the very wherever the bottom room is there's a banner in the bottom room this is actually the entrance and in that banner there's like writing on it and then there's people's names and if so if you get to the bottom of deep mine then you can you can have your name written on it um which i guess is kind of interesting i've had a couple people um send me their uh i've only actually had one student two students now get to the bottom of deep mind because it is difficult like people like the problems are not crazy but like you have to be precise and so kids generally have a problem with that they like you know they give up or whatever they just like not get lazy but they get foggy they get like they're like ah never mind so yeah um let me pull this video url yeah, so do you guys have any questions about the SHSAT generally? I could just bust out some math problems just so you guys could see like what what's good with the test. But if you have any questions specifically, I'm happy to answer those too. 
All right, hold up. Let me, let me turn off the volume on this video. All right, chill. What is up with my video? Like YouTube is acting so slow. It's like the coming ad apocalypse is like destroying like <laughs> destroying YouTube. Okay, so let's just do some math problems and just so I could show you generally like some tricks, uh let's just start with some algebra tricks that like you know will be on the test that can be super useful to to have. Um so the first one is like they'll have something like this. I actually think this is a equa an equation. They'll have like one, let's just say 100 minus W over nine equals G, something like that. And they'll say, what is the value of G when W equals nine? So what is G equal when W equals nine? So a lot of times we want to isolate our variable up here, um, but it's going to be a little bit of a hard time um, isolating it because we have this nine kind of throwing a wrench in things. So a lot of kids will just look at this and go, okay, what divided by nine is, or I guess, you know, I actually, we're solving for G, so I can't, you can't work backwards in that way. But what you can do is plug in the nine for W. I forgot that we were solving for W. Duh. 9 equals G, and that's 91 over 9 equals G, and that's our answer. I mean, yeah, I mean, can we actually, no, we can't, yeah. Oh, uh, what's up, Venus, how you doing? So, yeah, um, just keeping in mind that sometimes we can just plug in and get our answer, although sometimes they will do something like this. Let me change the problem a little bit. And they'll say y equals 9, what is x equal? Okay, so now we're getting into a little bit more of like where you have to algebra it up. You can't just like plug in and do straight math. So something like this, you do want to plug in what you know. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm such a huge fan of taking algebra as slow as you want. Like you need to focus on being good. Okay. So there's two ways to do this, and I'm going to show you both ways, just depending on where you're at with algebra. Might be One might be better for you, one might not be better for you. Um, the first way is to think to yourself, we need to solve for x. So what divided by 9 is 9? Well, 81 divided by 9 is 9. So therefore, we know that this needs to equal 81 up here. We can do the 90 minus x needs to equal 81. Um, x is going to 81. X is going to equal 9, and that's our answer. The other way to do this and like doing it legit algebraically would be, let me just rewrite it, because this would be useful to use. A lot of times they throw things in the denominator or whatever, and you want to get them out. So this entire thing is divided by 9. So in the opposite of dividing by 9 is multiplying by 9. And if I do it on the left side, I also have to do it on the right side. So this cancels out. These nines cancel out. Lucky us. So what we're ended up with is 90 minus x equals 81. And wow, look how similar that is to what we were doing earlier. Now, since we're doing this algebraically, I'm going to finish it algebraically. We're going to add x to each side. Then we're going to subtract 81 from each side and we come up with the same answer. Another thing that they'll do with uh, algebra, and this is like, bros, like trust me, this is super like beginning algebra stuff, is they'll, they'll do something like this. Right, does anybody have, um, does anybody know what the terminology is on how to like quickly do these problems?
plot surprises delights Yeah, Elizabeth, that's exactly it. That's the term. Perfect. And I always recommend doing the multiplication out 39. Okay. Divide both sides by 39. Yeah, our W is going to equal 1. Message retracted. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, you both are right, actually. So I think Jace said ratios before he retracted it, which is actually a kind of a slick way to do these problems because you could say this is a ratio and this is a ratio and therefore they need to be equal. This W over 3 needs to equal this 13 over 9. Um, so that, that is one way you can do it. One kind of trick that I'll give you guys that will save you a little bit of time on the test um, if you remember to do this. Given a cross multiply thing like this, right? You can reduce this second fraction first. And that way your math doesn't have to involve all of this stuff. So 13 divided by 39, I know 39 can actually be divided by 13, 3. So if I simplify this, and divide the top by 13 and divide the bottom by 13, what I end up getting is, and then the problem is like, you know, becomes kind of, kind of really easy, right? So yeah, you can do your cross multiplying here. You could set up your ratio here if you wanted to, like Jace mentioned. Uh, but as we can see, since the base is the same, this W is going to equal one. So that's just, you know, kind of a way to, you know, speed up your cross multiplication. Cool. So one thing with cross multiplication is there has to be an equal sign. We need to like be super, super clear that this, um, oh man, <laughs> hold up, <laughs> that this uh, 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 39, that's horrible, is very, 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 very different from this okay like I, I know these are two different things and you're probably like oh I know but like I I see it all the time when we have a multiplication problem with two fractions people just kind of go oh cross multiplying time even if they don't consider in their head cross multiplying they're just so used to doing it so just keep in mind that cross multiplication only works when there's an equal sign in the middle okay chill uh, should I do some more algebra goes away. Um, that goes away. All right. Let's see. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about the SHSAT while I'm doing this, just holla, holla at your boy. All right, so let me write my website again because I spent hundreds of hours on this game. <laughs> I don't even know if it's good. I think it's good. I actually know it's good, but whatever. Check it out. Yeah, this is a, a great kind of math game thing. All right, Elizabeth wants more algebra. Here it comes. Yashin, Yashin, Hoke. That's a cool name, man. Yashin, that's a cool name. Okay, so let's talk about algebra, right? A lot of times they'll give you algebra with like a, um, I don't know, they call them age games. Let me, um, let me give you guys an age game. Let me pull one up on my computer and I'll write it out. Just give me a second. One day I'll show you guys these grails that I've built. Okay, yeah, let's do one from the deep mine. Um, so, this is really hard stuff. Um, so don't get don't get freaked if this is like whoa too many.
All right, bros. Throw up the question. Hey, hey. Oh, so Jace asks, what type of math problems? So algebra. Um, and Yashin, what uh, what questions like the first one? What do you mean? I, I, I don't really remember which f first one was. Uh, the math problems in the game are algebra math problems. Some of them are order of operations math problems. Um, but, oh yeah, you guys can't really read that. But yeah, it's it shouldn't be anything too, too crazily difficult. The whole point is just to see if you guys can be precise. And if you get to the bottom of DeepMind, then I'll, you can like, you can write your name on the wall of the, like the finish room because it's, you know, every week I'm adding and I'm making the mind deeper and deeper and deeper. So, and that flag will go with it. So if you want to put your name on that banner, that's at the very bottom, you have to get to the bottom. And there's only one way to do it. So does anyone know how to do this one? Does anybody have any idea? how to set it up or want to share how they set it up because this is totally free game for the SHSAT. And Rusem Paul, you say the SHSAT is unfair and it, I mean that word is kind of tough. Uh, what I would say instead of unfair is just really, really hard and they do what they can to trick as many people as possible. So it's not like unfair but they're trying to get the average kid to get a 50%. They're trying to get the average kid to get an F. And so even if just in your school, think about how hard a test would be. All right, yeah, Yeshin, keep doing it, man. Keep trying. It's all good. Yeah, how was your experience taking it? Coven, what's up, man? Hola. Okay. So, Yashin thinks... 50 marbles. Anybody else still working on this or should I explain it? It was hard. All right. Jay says 40 marbles. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to break this down. Vincent, what's up? So yeah, so with these types of problems, you can always, always check your answer. So if you do think it's 50, you can plug it in. Oh, thanks, Vincent. If you do love it, if you do think it's 40, you can plug it in. So that's one way to do these problems is like gas and check, gas and check, gas and check, right? So let's just throw this 40 number in there, right? So 40 is how many Joe has. He gives Bill, so if Joe has 40, then that means Bill has 20. And if Joe gives Bill 10 marbles, then he'll have 30 and he'll have 30. So that means they would have the same amount of marbles. So that's the way we can check it to go, oh, that isn't our answer. Something like this, we could definitely check and it would work out. So yeah, Yashin, you did definitely gave the right answer here, which is lovely. But how do we get to this algebraically? Do we just have to keep guessing and checking? Well, we can. It's a system of equations. And I'm going to use J for Joe and B for Bill. So we know the amount of marbles Joe has is twice as many as the amount of marbles Bill has. If this is 10, this is 5. If this is 100, this is 50, right? Then we know that if Joe gives Bill 10 marbles, then Joe no longer has twice as much. Actually, Joe is losing out. He has 10 less marbles now. And we know Bill has 10 more marbles. So this is how we represent that exchange in marbles between one dude and the other dude. So these are our two equations, but we're not actually quite done with this guy here because we have a piece of information we haven't folded in. But Joe still has five more marbles. So we know that these are not equal. 
In fact, this guy has less. How many less? Five more. So in order for these two sides of this equation to be equal, we need to add five more to Bill's side. Now this, if you can get this, you're a rock star, right? Because this is like kind of SAT tier math work. So just know that if Bill gives away or if Joe gives away 10 marbles, J is the amount he originally had. We got to like lock that in and he's going to have 10 less. And Bill, the amount of, he originally had is going to be 10 greater, but he still needs five more because he has five less marbles. Okay. So, okay, cool. So I guess we'll just solve this using substitution. Is, does anybody, is anybody familiar with um, substitution or um, like systems of equations? It's kind of like a, I don't know. It's kind of like an advanced concept, but does anybody, has anybody been taught system of equations or anything like that? Because I could just teach you the down and dirty way to do this for sure. Oh, yes. So, Rasem Paul on it. He's absolutely on it. So, yeah, notice that this 2B equals J. Yeah, he's definitely on it. So, this 2B equals J. So, every time we see a J, we can plug in that 2B. So, every time I see this J, I'm going to put 2B. Okay, so now I'm going to start collecting like terms here because we know, oh, you guys can't even see that anymore. So we know 2B minus 10 equals B plus 15. So I'm going to add 10 and add 10. A lot of people want to go a little bit faster than this, but I like doing algebra nice and slow. Okay, I'm going to subtract B from each side. Cool. Cool. So we're done, right? 25 will be an answer choice. Is that the correct answer? Because when you're taking this SHSAT, no, they're doing everything they can to try to trick you. Okay, so 25, I guarantee if this problem was on the actual test, 25 would be an answer choice. Yeah, Yashin, that's exactly it. So yeah, you have to times it by two, Rasem Paul, yep, exactly, yep. So yeah, you're going to double this guy, and we are going to get the answer that Yeshin kind of came in with. Um, yeah, exactly. So that 50 is right. Cool. So what do you guys think about these algebra problems, right? Is this something that you guys have seen in school or something you're used to seeing? Or does this like blow your mind? Um, let me see what else I can give you guys that'll be fun here. Um, oh, that's a pretty good one. Okay, I think I'm going to do that one. All right. And just assume for, for you guys that this is like, just assume that this is a grid in question. So there is no answer choices. Oh, 
also. I gotta shill my game. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me shill my game really quick. All right, properly shilled. Okay, so what do you guys think about this question? What do you think the answer is? I'll give you guys a minute or two to try to solve this. Oh, thanks. I see I have six likes. Thanks, bros. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take those six likes and cherish, and cherish them. Up. I gotta get new bedding software. software. Crash, crash. Four, 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 four Q, Q is nine, nine. nine. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I really, really, really like, like. I sound like, like, I sound like a robot, robot crash, 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 currently. currently. <laughs> um, um, but, but <laughs> so, 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 Jace, Jace I really, really like what you did there. And what he did was that you picked your own number that works in the context of the problem. That's really That's slick. slick. So, so she picked, she picked um, that Q that equals three. 3. And so, and if so Q, Q equals, equals 3, 3, then 3Q three three is going to equal 9. Is that a positive odd number? Yeah. So that's a good one to pick. I also like that you didn't pick 1, because you can kind of get into trouble sometimes when you pick 1. Not here, but sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Elizabeth. I sound like a robot or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> she also turned out a little bit. I'm going to finish this stream pretty soon now that this test has been a total total blow up. So yeah, 3Q three, three plus 7, we know that that's 9 in there. So 3 times 3 plus 7 is going to equal 16. So between 9 and 16, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so there's our answer, right? How'd you get four, Jace? You were so close. What happened? Did you count 16, Jace? That'll get you, dude. So what I would recommend for you homies, because I, I have a tutoring session right after this. I can't stick around for the full hour, unfortunately. But I will be doing more live streams um, in the future. So here's my website. Everything on it is free. Okay. And then there's like a bunch of boxes in the bottom of the website. And one of them says game games or whatever click that one i really i mean play the geometry swamp for sure i'll write that down but what i really really am interested to see how you guys do is <laughs> is in this deep mine game i wish i could link it directly but it's probably not best that i do that with youtube's like thing so yeah, I'm gonna definitely be doing more uh, live streams. Um, if you guys have like a preferred time that works, like that you think would be a good time to do these live streams, let me know because I'm just starting up for the year and my schedule is still kind of in flux. Um, also, if you have any other questions about the SHSAT, um, 
so yeah i do recommend you go do deep mind here's my email um if you have any questions sure yeah definitely elizabeth check them out um i it's it's going to be growing i i have a lot of ambition with these games um just because i had kind of fun making these first two um so if you guys have any feedback or if you see any bugs in the game or whatever like totally just let me know Oh, Laurel, I just saw your comment. Don't be nervous. You have so much time before the test. And if you're working hard, like the best way to be not nervous when you walk into the test room is to work really, really hard this summer and this fall. That way, no, more, no matter what, you'll like be feeling really confident, even if the test is really hard. So yeah, dudes, I'm going to get out of here. This was just kind of like a test stream to see if my encoder software works and it's trash. So I'm going to have to get a better encoder or at least play with this one so I don't sound like a robot on the stream and that there's not like a, a 10 second lag over the entire video, you know. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for checking out this for, you know, this test or whatever. And I'll definitely keep you guys updated as soon as new shsat material comes out if you're looking to study definitely hit up my website there's like a ton of study material on there and questions that you can answer and test your skills basically everything that's on the shsat is on my website or my youtube page check out these games uh spent a ton of time making them and i know you'll love them um, and if you have any questions, even if you're like stuck on homework or if you're stuck on just a question in class or whatever, definitely hit me up via email. I definitely got time to shoot off some emails and help you guys out. All right. So, wow. I can't believe it. That's the first stream of 2019. Who knew it would be so inspiring? So, so incredible. Thank you all for <laughs> all six of you who are coming and watching it. Um, Yashin, I don't know when the next stream is going to be. It's definitely going to be next week, not tomorrow. So be on the lookout. If not Monday or Tuesday, it'll be like a Wednesday or Thursday thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you guys got it, dudes. So definitely check out my videos. And if you have any questions, like, this is what I do all day. So, like, I'm here for you, homies. Um, yeah, share the video. That helps out. Or just go to any of my random videos and share them. That helps out so much with YouTube's algorithms and stuff like that. All right, bros, I'm out. Be on the lookout for live streams. Like, subscribe. You know it's all good. Peace.